Good morning. It's a daily quiz, episode 13, Advanced Math. Ooh, nobody likes advanced math. I'm John Nucleus, and I, I'm your host for the daily quiz. This is in CSP 11, Domain 6, ASP 11, Domain 1, OSHT, Domain 1. First, let me tell you, these three questions are hard. The cylinder, you'll get. You have to know how to do the cylinder. It is 90% chance you'll get it. The other two questions, probably a 10% chance you might get it. It's low. It's very low. Let's get into it. Safety professional needs to position a ladder to reach a platform 15 feet above the ground. Ensure proper angle. The base of the ladder is placed 4 feet from the wall. What length of ladder is required? They have grab rails on the roof axis, so you don't have to worry about the 3 foot above the roof landing. 15, 15.5, 16, 17. This is what they call Pythagorean Theorem. We're going to have the ladder at the proper angle. The diagonal is going to be at 15 feet. The 4 feet from the wall, so all we need is calculate the... I mean, excuse me, we have 15 feet for the vertical, 4 feet for the uh, horizontal. Now the diagonal is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the length, which is the hypotenuse is the height, 15 squared, 15 times 15, plus the base, 4 times 4, add those together, and we're going to get 241 and take the square root. So the answer is 15.5. Don't have to worry about the 5.2. This is hard. This comes up probably more on the ASP than the CSP, but you have to know. Remember, the math database is going to be shared between these uh, test and you might get that lucky question on this one. It's not hard. You just have to remember which one is which. The height, 15. The base, 4. Square both of those and add them together and then take the square root. That means you have to do the calculator that you're given, the TI XS30 or TI30 XS, whatever you want to call it. It'll be on the screen. All right, this one is a brutal one. Uh, this is probably like 1 in 20 tests. It's not that common. It's usually only on the ASP. Usually. Safety professionals accessing the stopping distance of workhouse forklift. The forklift is traveling at 6 miles an hour, and they give you the conversion. You don't have to calculate miles to feet per second. So it's 88 feet per second is their traveling speed or velocity. The operation perception reaction time is 1.5 seconds. Pretty common. And the forklift can break at 4 feet per second squared. That means it's going to decelerate. The obstruction appears 25 feet ahead. What's the forklift total stopping distance? The 25 doesn't have anything to do in the question, you know, other than you might hit it. So reaction distance plus the braking distance. And they'll give you this formula for the braking distance. Velocity squared, V times V is divided by 2 times the acceleration. Okay, so they're going to tell you negative acceleration of 4 feet per second. So is the distance A 13.2, B 19.7, or excuse me, 9.7, C 22.9, D 25.0? Will you really remember this? It's a tough question. You know, sometimes we just tell people, you could always get this unbelievably hard question, and it's only 1 out of 200. But let's go through it anyway. The reaction distance is what we have to calculate first. So we know it's going 88 feet per second, and we have a reaction distance of 15. Multiply those together. We cancel out the seconds, and we get 13.2 feet. You will go 13.2 feet. Where does this come up? All the time is in how fast you're going on the road. And if your reaction distance is slowed because of alcohol or cell phone, then you're going to go, like they said, a length of a football field. Because you're not going 88, 6 miles an hour, right? The braking distance is now that V squared plus 2A. Remember, they give you everything, so you don't have to convert anything. The velocity, 88 feet per second, times 88 feet per second, divided by our... 2 times our deceleration of 4 feet per second. So we're going to go in and stop at 74 
which is the 88 times 8.8 8 .8 times 8.8, .8, divided by 8 is equal to 9.6 feet. That's how much we're going to stop. So we're actually going to travel further reacting to it than actually breaking it. That's why tension is important. So the total stopping distances are sum of both of these, 13.2 plus 9.6 is equal to 22.88. Remember, none of these answers are going to be so close. It won't be like 22.9 plus, you know, another one will be 23 and another one will be 23.1. They're, they're pretty far apart. So if you kind of get close, you'll, you'll get the answer. But that is a tough question. A 1 in 20, and you can do it. If you can remember, they give you the numbers. You just have to remember when they tell you to speed, it's the velocity. When they tell you deceleration, that's the A, the acceleration. They don't tell you what A means. They just expect you to know it's the acceleration, in this case, 4. Be nice if you kind of like. This is physics. Physics is F equals UN, or fun. And most people said there's no fun in physics. <laughs> Not if you're in safety. So a safety professional needs to estimate how much liquid can be stored in a horizontal cylinder tank used for a confined space entry. You will get one form of this that may give you uh, the, the quantity, ask you how high it's got to be. You just have to do this backwards and forwards. The tank has a diameter of 10 feet and a length of 20 feet. What's the proximal total volume in cubic feet? 758, B, 1257, C, 1570, D, 3140. Okay, the first curveball is you have to remember the area of a circle times the height. If you don't remember that, and they're not giving it to you, you're not going to get this question. You have to remember this. This is stuff that people forgot since geometry in high school. So our volume, you don't have to remember the formula. I just remember pi r squared is the area times the height. That's all you're doing, taking the height of it times the diameter. But the trick is radius is half the diameter. So they're going to, if you know, it's a 10-foot diameter. It's a 5-foot radius. From the center point of that cylinder to the edge is the radius, and that's 5 feet. Pi, 3.14, or you can hit the pi function on the calculator. Same thing. It goes infinite. So pi times 5 times 5 is our area. So if I just said it's 3 times 5 times 5, that's going to be... 75. About. About. It's going to be a little higher because we got the 3.14. The height is 20 feet, so we just multiply that area times 20. So here we are going to go through the calculation. 3.14 times our radius, 5 times 5. Remember when it's got the 2, it means square. That means 5 times 5 times our height. 3.15 times our 25 times our 20 is equal to 1,570 square cubic feet. So this one you gotta know. And once you know it, you know what? Congratulate yourself because you are gonna get probably one of the toughest. I've had people say, I've only got like, on the CSP, I've only got like three of them, and this is one of the three. You can get a lot of them. There's a video called um, ASP CSP Math with the 10 most common questions on the CSP. I'd recommend watching that also. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for coming.